<laughs> you were coming back to where they make it, Niels. Wouldn't it have been cheaper to buy it here? Whiskey. Hmm? He says, P.S., do you think I can have uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg's job? Well, it sounds like you know about as much as he does. I don't know anything. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Marble Arch. Hello, Adam. Hi there. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. So I was just calling to see if you'd heard this week an LBC exclusive. News just in. Yeah. Um, they said that um, Rishi Sunak had lied this week about <gasps> buying a McDonald's a wrap. Oh, yeah. with a hash brown. And I thought, why is this making news? They did a little tea time teaser, <laughs> so I actually hung on to hear what they had to say. Yes. And then they revealed, I thought it was going to be a lie like when he lied about um, how, no, the car being his or ha- knowing how to use contactless or mm. pretending he didn't know any working class people even though he actually isn't that rich. I don't know what's worse, to be rich pretending to be poor or poor pretending to be rich because his dad seemed so elated to when be, he said he didn't know any working class people. The, the, answer he loved is, it. the answer is to be rich pretending to be poor. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll remember that for next time. But he lied about having just come from McDonald's and bought a hash brown for his kids. Well, and then um, your LBC people found out it hadn't even existed for two years and there's no yeah. plans of bringing it back. And I thought, why would you lie about something so tedious? Why would you lie about McDonald's? Like... It just seems so bizarre if that's your way of touching working class people. He must still have working class family. So I don't know why he pretends like he doesn't know. But why would you lie about McDonald's? I've also, I just couldn't get my head around it. And I thought, you being the brains, yeah. you could tell me. Why would you lie? That's not the way to touch working class people's hearts. They don't say, <laughs> oh, he's one of us because he's had a McDonald's. <laughs> well, it's, uh, he's, he's fighting against this notion that uh, b- just because he is worth hundreds of millions of pounds, and his wife is worth billions of pounds, that he is in some way out of touch with the ordinary person in the street. He's never met an ordinary person in the street. He has people to meet them for him. But uh, thanks, Adam. This is the story. Rishi Sunak, Fishy Sunak, has revealed his favourite things to order for breakfast at McDonald's, one of which does not exist. (laughs) Speaking on ITV's This Morning programme, Fishy Sunak was asked about a photograph posted on Instagram of him paying at a McDonald's self-service machine. Well, that's obviously staged because he doesn't know how to use a credit card. You think he knows how to use a self-service machine at McDonald's? No. Asked what he had ordered, he said, I get a bacon roll with ketchup and the pancakes. But if I'm with my daughters, then we get the wrap. If I'm with my eldest daughter, we get the wrap with the hash brown. That's what Fishy Sunak said. Liar! <laughs> it was pointed out to him after uh, that. It was pointed out to him afterwards that the breakfast wrap was actually taken off the menu two and a half years ago. What? <laughs> right. Uh, in a statement in January this year. The fast food chain com- confirmed that breakfast wraps, along with bagels, would not be returning to the menu. Oh, no. A Sunak campaign source said, Rishi has been very clear that, and then we can just ignore everything that came afterwards, because we know it's a lie. Nick says, do you need a box of tissues? Maybe spend less time with James O'Brien and step into the real world. Oh, there's another uh, a Brexit uh, cult fan. Thinks he's won something. Still trying to find out what it is that he's won. But, uh, you know, you get uh, like a, a real deep um, tickle inside because he actually feels that he's won something through Brexit. What is it that you've won so far, Nick? I mean, how has your life improved? Give me one instance. I'll make it really easy for you. Just one. One way in which your life has improved since Brexit. Because in a brief three-hour show, I can't give you the list of the ways in which life has not improved and has, in fact, got worse. We have the worst inflation in the G7, by the way. I wonder why that might be. What has happened in this country that hasn't happened in any other country? Any other major economy? In fact, no other country in the world has been stupid enough to do... We keep doing stupid things. God, this country is run as well as my life. I keep doing stupid things too. But at least I'm only responsible for myself. Not like uh, you-know-who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, 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 where He's we... responsible for all 60 million of us. 
but we keep doing stupid things. No country in the history of the world has ever sold its water, for instance. Water we sold. We left the uh, biggest trading block on earth, which is so far, uh, which is so near rather, that you can see it from here. You can pr practically spit that far. No other country on earth has ever done anything like that. Just us. Why do we keep doing these stupid things while convincing ourselves that it was smart and we knew what we were doing all along? Oh, we knew what we were doing. We knew what we were voting for. No, you didn't. You voted to be poorer and have your horizons shrunk. Really? What a stupid thing to vote for, if that is actually what you voted for. Craig says, do you realise... Uh, or rather, you do realise that you are the weekend Prime Minister in charge and you are giving the national address to the people of this country. Everyone is sitting in front of the wireless, listening to every word. <laughs> right. Anita texts, Now I know the hospitality industry is struggling in this country, but I can't see the slogan, Come and float with the floaters, will increase tourism somehow. Um, and Nick says, What's the clubbing music caption you play? What's the tune? Well, I've tried to remember what it is, and um, I, what I thought it was is not what it actually is. I thought it was um, Schoenberg Marmion. And I can't remember whether Schoenberg was the artist or the name of the song, but that's what, that's what it was. Marmion uh, by Schoenberg, or Schoenberg by, by, by Marmion. I thought that's what uh, this was, but I don't think it actually is, having listened back to it, because somebody quizzed me about this a while ago. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Another dissatisfied customer. 0345 Hey, by the way, I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right. Yeah. Now, it's a right laugh. It is the week. It is the hour in the week that I laugh the most. And she does too. It is gigglesome. <laughs> Me and her, we try to solve people's problems um, while laughing like drains. If you have a problem that you want us to solve, then you'll have to send it to us. We're not mind readers. Send it to the following address. Nick and Carol at global.com. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com and gird yourself for total satisfaction. It comes out on a Monday, apart from that one Monday um, just gone that it didn't come out because I thought I'd lost it. And then it was re it was um, revived from, oh, I don't know, some technician. They pulled it out of their ear. It was like a magic trick. Oh. I thought I hadn't recorded uh, Carol's bit, which would have just been me talking to myself. You know, like this show. But um, I don't know how they did it, but they managed to um, magic it out of nowhere. And so that came out on Monday, the lost tape. And there's going to be a brand new one coming out this Monday. So if you want us to solve your problem, it's Nick and Carol at global.com. And look out for the podcast. There's over 100. There's, there might even be 120 or so episodes up there. I cannot believe that we managed to put so many episodes out without killing each other. Probably because she's in France and I'm in uh, London when we're doing it. But I think you'll be amused. If you have an hour and you wish to be amused, uh, then it will be right up your alley. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? This is LBC with Nick Abbott. So they opened their big mouths and out came talk. Talk, talk. News update. Mark texts, that rave tune you play is read three by the legendary English techno DJ and producer Dave Clark. Yes, I thought it might be him. Uh, it was on his uh, Archive One album, Red 3, sometimes called The Storm. Definitely not Marmion Schoenberg, says Mark, who is an expert. Uh, Carnforth. Hey, up, Annie. Hey, up, Nick. How are you doing? I am great, mate. Good, good. It's your uh, northern lazy malingerer here. I'm sure, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Liz just would like me to take up my bed and walk. Yes. In fact, she's probably getting ready to slush disability benefits as we speak. Annie, the, your next um, destination will be Rwanda if you don't get your finger out. Yes, yes, just put us all on a plane and drop us in the middle of the ocean or something. It's 
probably are. Or should you just be waiting for us all to freeze to death actually this winter? Yeah. Or put you through a meat grinder and uh, mm, we could make you into sausages. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Cumberland sausages. <laughs> Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I rang up about the um, the water. You know, why... I mean, here we are a living proof that water should never have been privatised because every now and again... Well, it's not every now and again. It's probably about once a year. The water main on our road springs a leak. Reg, you know, this is regularly it does. Yeah. And they come along, fix the leak, take some hours and hours, sometimes a whole day, and mm-hmm. then they off they go... And then it happens again nine months later or a yeah. year later. Well, who, who again knew again. that you, you couldn't fix a, a mains leak with chewing gum? It's just incredible. It's ridiculous. I mean, it obviously needs replacing, but that would interfere with their profit making. Of so course just, it would. Just carry on fixing the leaks. Yeah. And <laughs> the rest of the time, it's probably leaking out. I think it's only when it gets really bad uh, that they have to come along and, and fix it. But yes. I'm sure there's. You know, just loads and loads of leaks. When going there's on all hot, the time. bubbling sewage flowing down your high street, then they'll maybe do something about it. You know, if it's not. Oh no, too, we've had that as well. <laughs> if it's not too inconvenient for them. Yeah, no, we had that in our garden, unfortunately. Lovely. I looked to the back door one day because it's a glass back door, and uh, there was it was just like a river of sewage. I thought, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so I rang one of those drain away people yeah and and they came and stuck rods down it and said oh we don't think it's on your property and because uh, uh, we we're going to get them to put a camera down it. and they said oh no it'll cost you if we do it they said just ring united utilities which we did and they said oh we can come out in three days time three <laughs> I said no you can't i said it's going right down the side of our house it's just about to go around the front of the house mm-hmm. and i said we have carers and we have a key safe so they have to be able to get at it. Otherwise, we will be, you know, we'll die of starvation. So it's just, she said, oh, all right, we'll get somebody out today. Annie, dying of starvation because there is a moat of hot sewage surrounding your house <laughs> is perfectly normal for a well-run country. It is. It's absolutely normal. So they did manage to come out, and it wasn't out anything to do with us. It was the main sewer up above us. Some idiots have been putting all sorts of things down it, apparently, that oh, they shouldn't. morons. And, yeah, caused a great big... Wet wipes. You know, wet yes, wipes. Do wipes not and, put and wet oil. wipes down the toilet. Negative. Absolutely do not. And oil as well. That's yeah. what makes those fatberg things, yeah. isn't it? So they, yeah, got rid of it all. And they were very good. They did clean it all up and hose the whole place down with disinfectant and everything. Oh. But... But, yeah, I was glad we didn't have to wait through three days because otherwise we would have probably floated off in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just terrible. Oh, and another thing that um, uh, I was thinking tonight about all those Brexit voters who voted for Brexit. That yeah. Still like trying foreigners. to convince themselves that, uh, that they won something. Yes, definitely. Well, they'd be very annoyed to hear that tonight... Uh, it was on the Beeb news that uh, the government have said they're going to give visas to loads more foreigners, yeah. probably not EU ones, I imagine from further afield, uh, to come and work as care workers. Yeah, because Vietnam what... and Kyrgyzstan is what I heard. <laughs> oh I'm, I'm not kidding. <laughs> really? Yeah, that because and, and Brexiters are delighted about that because that is what they voted for. <laughs> They yes. knew what they were voting, voting for. for yeah. Affirmative. Yeah, that's what I've heard at great volume about a thousand times already. Vietnam and Kyrgyzstan. That's a bit random, isn't it? Very. <laughs> I did think it, they wouldn't be from Europe. And I've noticed a lot on um, when you ring up uh, call centres. Yeah. There's a lot of people now. There used to be quite a lot of Eastern Europeans worked in them. Mm. And now I've noticed there aren't any. And there's a lot of um, people from, sound like they come from Southern Africa, either from South Africa or Zimbabwe. Yeah. Right. Um, so I'm sure that the people that didn't like Eastern Europeans are probably going to like people that actually don't look like us, well, even less. Yeah. If the people that voted for Brexit actually did know what they were voting for, as they have told me, at great volume thousands of times and what they were voting for was fewer white europeans next door and more black africans if that's what they voted for i'm a knickerbocker glory with cream on top yes definitely i'm sure they'll be quite horrified 
and us, Naim and Nigel Farage will be blowing a gasket. What happened to <laughs> Nigel Farage? What happened to Nigel Farage? Well, um, first of all, I don't care. I'm a nutcase. And, no, uh, I don't. And but... second, who cares? We've got a few idiots in our party. <laughs> yes, he did disappear off your station and sort of disappear. Is he, got, is he on telly or something? Like I have that? no idea, and nor do I wish to know or, no. e- or even think about him for another single second. Bye-bye. No, Bye-bye, Nigel. Nice knowing you. <laughs> Not yes, really. Yes, it was. Oh, no, no, not really at all. Scurry but... off in your little Union Jack socks. Go bother someone else. Anyway, Annie, I've got to go. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. Darren texts, as soon as you said that blooming awful song, Save All Your Kisses for Me by Brotherhood of Man, which I said right at the beginning of the sh- show, it being the biggest selling single of 1976. What? Yeah, the biggest selling single of 1976. Because that's why we were talking about, uh, you know, punk and uh, all of that good stuff that came out in 1976. Many, many classic rock tracks. Rock and roll! But the biggest selling single, Brotherhood of Bloomin' Man and Save All Your Bloomin' Kisses for Me. It was at number one for six weeks. What? Anyway, Darren says, as soon as I heard that, uh, it reminded me of... Um, uh, back, back in the time when I was dating a young lady who tried to serenade me with that song. I jumped off the settee, sprinted out the door, never went back. Good choice there, Darren. Uh, You saved yourself a lot of grief there and probably saved her a lot of grief as well. It's a win-win situation. Uh, Richard Tex, have you seen Sajid Javid has grown a beard? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it suits him, no? No. No. (laughs) What's that about? Carol texts, I bought that Brotherhood of Man single, Save All Your Kisses for Me, but in my defence I was only 11 and it's in the context of my mum and dad driving us around with, in their Skoda with a cassette recorder. One of us had to hold on our knee that belted out Neil Sedaka and a crooner called Jack Jones. Yeah, I, well, right. I'd rather listen to Neil Sedaka than the Brotherhood of Man, but, you know, maybe that's just me. No, actually, I bet, I bet it's most people. <laughs> I would rather hear Neil Sedaka than The Brotherhood of Man. That's just a fact. K-Tex, what was that thing you mentioned in Woolwich? It's too late, K, it's gone. It's in Edinburgh and Belfast now. It's called Dreamscape. It's a hippie thing. Groovy. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at lbc. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. This is absolute tosh. Yeah, Cineworld. Hmm. You know, when cinemas close, we even if you don't go to them, you'll miss them when they're gone, because there ain't nothing like a uh, you know a film in the cinema. It's not the same as watching it on TV at home. It just isn't. And it definitely, definitely isn't the same as watching it on a laptop or your phone. It, it really isn't at all. But um, I think part of the problem is that Hollywood has just been making films for 15-year-olds for so long now. And 15-year-olds, they've got other things to do. I mean, they, have you seen how obsessed they are with their phones? They can't put them down for a single solitary second. They're just gazing into them all the time. Like they've found God in there. They're not interested in going to the cinema, even if uh, it's you know full of these uh, Marvel superhero stupid films. It seems that everything is being made for teenagers now, and um, that that business model don't work no more. It's almost like Hollywood hasn't really got that yet. Adults are interested in going to the cinema, but there, is no, there isn't anything in the cinema for adults. 
which I guess is why that Top Gun film did well. I mean, apart from it being uh, like concentrated Americana, like somebody took a panful of Americana and concentrated it down to a thick syrup. Apart from that, it is, you know, vaguely adult. I mean, it's a bit teenagerish, full of, uh, you know, stunts and uh, so on, but it is adult, adult-ish, which is why it did so well. But there ain't no uh, other films for adults. I mean, you, you, you get the, old, the odd British movie, and I do mean odd, but it will usually involve misery in some, in some way. Usually, it's misery. I like to go to the cinema to be excited. I mean, I like action-adventure, but there hasn't been any, partly because of the uh, COVID thing. You know, it shut all that down. So, yeah, I get why Cineworld are, uh, are in uh, trouble. All cinema is going to... If, if they're in trouble, then you think that all cinema is in trouble. Um, but, like I said, we'll miss them when they're gone. Matt says, why do people always moan about the NHS on here on and online? I was at Lewisham Hospital today. I didn't wait long for an x-ray. It was also efficient and professional. What, you mean like a hospital should be? <laughs> i got another question for you, Matt. Why do people always say how great the NHS is when they get seen at a reasonable time? It's how it's supposed to be. It's like saying, oh, I walked into a sandwich shop and they had uh, egg and cress. And it was just, uh, they were absolutely fantastic. I walked into a sandwich shop and I came out with a sandwich. It's unbelievable. No, it's entirely believable. That's what they're supposed to do. And we weren't, we're just so pathetically grateful when something works in this country. Woolwich, Richard. From Woolwich? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Um, yeah, yeah, but, but on that on that um, Cine um, story, they lost. They they're four billion in debt, aren't they? Five. It's a, is it five? It's just a. St- how can a company get five billion in debt? Well, very easily. But, I mean, that seemed to be how capitalism works these days. I'm not saying that this is what Cine World's problem was, but. The way that capitalism used to work is that people, you know, they they did work and then the profits were shared out relatively evenly among all the people that created the wealth. These days, what capitalism has become is there's some like sort of vampires that just go from company to company. Like they hop, but not vampires, even it's more like um, mosquitoes. They just hop from host to host. They suck all the blood out of a company by... Uh, loading it with debt, then giving that money that they've loaded in debt to themselves for excellence in being an executive. And then that that company will then sink under that weight of debt. But they've made a hundred million pounds and then they go and do it to another company. I'm not saying that that's what happened with Cineworld. I'm saying that that is uh, how capitalism works these days, which is where uh, people like Mick Lynch come in. Yeah, yeah, and I, I want to talk about Mick, Mick, Mick Lynch, but can, can I just quickly say that your one of your callers talked about Liz Truss's base camp. I just find I find that ridiculous. I mean, she doesn't have a base camp. That's the point about mistrust. She she just is a she's like some protein. She just she's just appealing to whoever, whoever is. Which that is never going to enable her to get into power at the time, yeah. and I, they, she she will ditch these old wrinklies as soon as they vote for her instantly, and she will turn her attention to, you know, uh, trying to get um, a, a more sort of sensible, sensible people, uh, you know, the sensible vote. But she I, I don't... she will go from one um, focus group which says what she needs to say to appeal to the golf club bores that she's uh, vying for their attention at the moment, and then swiftly pivot and disown everything that she's said over the last six months to now try to relate to the rest of us for the next general election. Because the focus group will say, well, these people, they aren't really for this and that and the other. And so she will deny everything that she's said to win the contest by saying, I have been very clear that, and then say the opposite to what she said, uh, you know, just yesterday. Exactly, and 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 the breaking story of McDonald's. It, 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 I just, I don't, I just can't see how anybody want to vote for the, this pair. 
Um, I'll tell you what, Richard, I bet that one of them, Liz Truss, will win the next general election. I betcha, betcha, (laughs) betcha. I I won't take that bet. (laughs) (laughs) I think they will. But can I just quickly, your time is precious, I know, but... The, the the thing that I'm, I I really like Mick Lynch. He's a great. He's, he's he's he sings my song, but the the thing I the thing that it was sings me, your song. I'm a I mean, union he, man. That one. <laughs> that one. That very that exactly that one. But the thing he, he keeps going on about this kind of the the the, the working classes, mm. and I, and and that kind of irritates me because I just don't think I just think it's more subtle than that. It's more complex than that. I, I just know I know so many stories from so many friends, colleagues, who have working class in their background somewhere, and they've moved on, and now they're sort of an there's something else. They're an executive class. They're an academic class. They're executive, and and I and I just wonder. I just want. I, it made me thought think today that. Talking about the working classes is is almost as obsessional as, as the the toffs talking about their pedigree. It's the same story, yeah. and I wish you would just ditch it. Um, yes, I understand what I understand what you're saying. Because it, it, I, I, I was listening to him go on about that today, and it seemed a bit a bit like, am I looking at somebody speaking in the 1970s or now? Because it, it did seem a bit odd to be talking about. Uh, you know, we have to stand up for the working class when he represents people that, and I know that he's not the guy that does the, uh, the he's, he's not part of the union that represents the re- the train drivers who are high skilled, high wage people, that his union is more like, uh, you know, the cleaning staff and the admin staff and so on. Not admin exactly, but, uh, you know, the, the people that f- fix the points and all that stuff. But, um, if you're earning 50 grand, are you still working class? Exactly. And this becomes then a danger for a, 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 a movement like Labour. If they stick to the working class, aspirationally, people don't, would, 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 want to, would want to start voting Tory. They do. That's the whole point of it. They get, they get a, a, some sort of, they get into their kind of background some more kind of um, something beyond working class, whatever that means, because I'm still very confused about that term. And then suddenly they start voting Tory. Well, they so do. I, I, the, the, the demographic that voted Conservative, as far as class goes, overwhelmingly was C2DE. It was the, the, the lower down the economic scale you go, the more likely you are to vote Conservative. It, it's as though reality has been flipped on its head. The, yeah. the more well-off you are, the more likely you are to vote Labour. The less well-off you are, the more likely you are to vote Conservative. I've, explain that to me, I double dare you. Yeah. But you see, I think, so controversially, I was thinking there's probably three classes in modern Britain. One is a salaried class, and that's not, I say that's about 94% of the population. Then you've got the capitalist class, and then I think you've got the pensioners and the welfare class. I just think I just think those are the three classes. But pensioners is a, a pretty broad class, though, isn't it? I mean, you've got pensioners who are millionaires. Um, you've got uh, in you know uh, readily available assets. You've got pensioners who are millionaires uh, with uh, non-liquid assets because they they bought their house in 1970 for ten grand, and now now it's worth two million pounds because and they made that money just by sitting there and doing nothing <laughs> so you know there's there's pensioners and there's pensioners yeah yeah you you've, you've you've picked out the flaw in my argument <laughs> well it's not really a flaw i i agree with what you're saying that this uh, like dividing us all into working class and um middle class and upper class it, it just seems a bit uh, it's a bit out of time yeah, exactly. It's out of time, and ultimately, it's it's a kind of a it's 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 self defeating because as pe- if you force this kind of aspirational class, whatever it means, mm. ultimately people are going to want are going to aspire out of the class that yeah. you are trying to cr- make them belong to. Right. Yeah. So just stop it. 
<laughs> right, you, uh, but you wouldn't say that to his face, though, would you? No, no, no. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Richard. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Adam text. Did you see Fishy Sunak ordering McDonald's in his Prada shoes? <laughs> Very relatable. Why do people keep going on about his shoes? I don't have a problem with Fishy Sunak's shoes. It's everything above the shoes that I have a problem with. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Uh, by the way, one of the three podcasts that I do is called The Nick Abbott Habit, and it is clips of old shows. Now, the shows that I've been um, raiding for clips, I've been um, up until recently, the very start of the COVID. Uh, the mad bat disease <laughs> and it all got a bit serious so I thought I'll, I'll think I'll jump ahead a few months to um, you know sort of get past that that period of, uh, of misery because do people really want to hear that probably not so I've skipped ahead a bit and um, landed on some funny again so if you got half an hour and you wish to be amused and it's the best of this show from a couple of years ago um, I'll just uh, I'll stick them all together with my own hands. And then it comes out on Monday uh, where you get your podcast. Global Player is the place to get all of this stuff. If you haven't got that, then it's uh, available on uh, uh, App and uh, Android, your App Store. Global Player. One of the three podcasts that I do, they're all on there. It's called The Nick Abbott Habit. comes out on Monday. I think you'll love it. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. What's he got to be depressed about? Patrick texts, if Monopoly was true to life, utilities would be worth more than Park Lane and Mayfair. Think of the fun you'd have, clobbering poor people from deprived... deprived... <laughs> Think of the fun you'd have, clobbering poor people from deprived backgrounds as they crawl around the board on their way to bankruptcy. If you wish all this for real, just vote Tory, said Patrick. Uh, TK says, as my mum said in the 1970s, give a working man a colour TV and the chance of a week in Mallorca and he's a blooming Tory. <laughs> uh, David says, just got back from my staycation on the South Coast and I'm as brown as if I'd spent my holiday abroad. I'm wondering now, though, if the tan is less to do with the sunshine and more to do with my daily swim in the English Channel. <laughs> Don't go in there. Disgusting. You've got no idea what's in there. And uh, finally for the moment, Jenny says, have you any idea how bigoted you are when it comes to Brexit? You come across as idiotic, says Jenny. Theresa May was an apologist for Brexit and then we had Covid. It's reasonable to say it's too soon to evaluate, which is not the fault of Brexit. Oh, blimey. How long are you going to delude yourself for, Jenny? It's too soon to evaluate? No, it isn't. I mean, how much evidence do you need? An unlimited amount is the right answer. They need an unlimited amount of, of uh, evidence. No amount of evidence will convince them otherwise. It's like trying to tell a uh, religionist that there ain't no such thing as God. They'll never believe you. They've joined a cult. Still waiting there with their hands out, waiting for the sunlit uplands to be delivered to them. <laughs> Good luck with that. Let's have um, Cornwall. Malcolm. Oh, Nick, how you doing, mate? Good, thanks. Nick, Brexit, you lost. Yeah, <coughs> you get, over get over it. it yeah, mate. I know, yeah. Nick, a um, couple of two things. Uh, Liz Tress, I don't know what the criticism is all about. Uh, grammar schools, she's an advocate of more grammar schools. All she's doing, Nick, is she's trying to level up the great-grandchildren of the people who would be voting for her. Mm -hmm. Because they are the people who will... Um, their great-grandkids will be going to, to the grammar schools. Yep. And she's levelling up between them and public school children. Right. It's the Conservative voters who can't afford 
to send their kids to independent schools. Yeah, because independent schools are full of um, Chinese and Malaysian kids. Yeah, they don't come cheap. And then <laughs> some of them made me smile uh, um, earlier, Nick, and um, prime ministers that were mentioned. And it, it dawned on me since 2015, we've had four conservative prime ministers, or we will have, in, in in about three weeks' time, yeah. four Conservative Prime Ministers, uh, none of which will see out a first term, all of whom are candidates for the shortest uh, uh, seated Prime Ministers that we've got. Yeah. And so, to that extent, I think they are genuinely world beating. <laughs> well, it's a good job we uh, didn't have a coalition of chaos, though, eh? Can you imagine? Yeah. But think about it, David Cameron, bless him, five years in coalition, and then he lasts about a year and a half when he comes up with the absolute wheeze of, well, let's um, stick our feet in, in, in the water and put this one to bed forever. We'll have a Brexit vote. A Brexit vote. And I think this is nonsense. Yeah. Blew up in his face. Then you get Theresa May, who, is, who, who generated a red, white and blue Brexit deal. Uh, which uh, sunk, and then you 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 got the Bojo, who had um, an oven ready deal, mm. and now you've got this absolute clown show about to pick up the reins. Who, wow! <laughs> how can how can they do it? How, how can a, um, a party with a history of the Tories? elect this woman. I just don't get it. No, I don't get it either. I, uh, I think that... It's unreal. Uh, it Maybe while I was uh, asleep, or perhaps I've been in a coma, but this, this country has obviously done something really, really bad to deserve this. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but it must have been awful, Malcolm. Oh, my God. I mean, Trump and America, Trump and, and Russia, uh, uh, that was his, his absolute downfall. Russia... At the end of the day, you Trump's, know, just like Trump's downfall. He ain't fallen yet. He's going to get back up. Like I keep saying, I, think, I think he will. I, I, I don't think I, there's far too much, I think, stacked against him. Yes, he still has the base, but I don't get to be enough. And, and Biden, he, he's sneaking up on the rails. I tell no. you, he's, he's starting to get a couple of bits of policy. Through he's him. way too old to, to stand again. And who have they got to um, to replace him? Uh, you know, may, maybe I'm not uh, close enough to what's happening in American politics, but it doesn't look like anybody has got the, the sort of um, the draw of Donald Trump. And to talk about a cult, like we've got a we've got the Brexit cultists in this country, but they're, but they're yeah. on another scale entirely. Want to say that that it literally is Brexit that will be the undoing of these four short-lived Tory prime ministers, all of them. I mean, trust that she will go down because you know she, she was um, a Lib Demer, which I've mentioned before, a Lib Demer, a Remainer, and what was it, the other thing? Yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't thing. matter what she said before. It's what she says right now. She's for um, sending people to Rwanda. That gets a big tick with yeah. the cultists. She's for Brexit. That gets a big tick with the cultists. It doesn't matter that Brexit doesn't give. Any single solitary thing that they promised it was going to give, it doesn't make any difference because the people have invested too no. much in it. Too mu I'm telling you, too much hope and too much loss of face to admit that you to admit that you've been had. It's true. I, there's, there's too many things starting to come out, Nick, that she said and done in the past. With the Tory voters, the, the, the Tory electors and party members, she's saying absolutely all the, the right things. It doesn't but make it any... Right... Doesn't make any. What she said in the past no, doesn't but... make any difference with the people. It's what she said 10 minutes ago. That's what they're concerned about. The, the, the point I'm making, Nick, is that she's saying the right things with the voters, but with the general electorate, they, they're just not right. going to vote for... Yeah, but they're they're going to hate her, man. You don't get it, though. It's not what she's saying now for the general election. It's what she says... Five minutes before yeah, the general either. election, she's going to change all of her positions on on every issue between now and the next election. <laughs> Don't pay attention to anything she's saying now because it's not for us. It's not for the uh, for the general public. She's not talking to us. She's talking to the bore propping up the bar in the golf club. That's all no, she's I concerned she about. Said, she said too much, Nick. I think for that to hold. 
I don't think that will hold. I think she will be gone. The Tories will be gone because too much has happened. And with with the big things that are that, that, that about to hit the country. Right. And I mean the NHS and and um, strikes and jobs and bills and. No, they got no chance, Nick. Honestly, they got no chance in the next election. <laughs> okay, yeah. then. Well, I guess we'll see. You know, this uh, we're, we're, we're not um, just um, engaged in conjecture about something that might not happen. You know, assuming we all live that long, it's going to happen to us eventually, the next general election. And I'll wait. I'll put a small amount on uh, the Tories winning the next one, Malcolm. You lose it, mate. You lose it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. If you say so. Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. Helen texts, can you really say you lost when your opposition was Cambridge Analytica? Jim says, whether you vote for Liz Truss or Keir Starmer, they both support Brexit. Um, well, OK, Liz Truss did not support Brexit until it, she discovered that it was beneficial for her career to say that she did. And I've got no idea what Keir Starmer believes at all. I wonder if he does. I mean, I don't really know his position on anything. Maybe that's uh, intentional. I know his position with uh, hair products. You don't need to put all of that product in your hair. You just don't. You just don't. Take it from an expert, Keir. John says, last two weeks of summer. Hooray. Good, good riddance. Summer. What? Are you joking? Let's have uh, Exeter. John. Oh, hello, Nick. Yes, John. Hello, how are you? You all right? I am great, mate. Good man. Um, I heard you earlier, you were talking about the particular demographic that, um, that the Tories have... That they've done well with the working class. You said they were called, what, C2DE, is that right? Yeah. Being the Lisbeth, I thought she was after R2-D2 and C-3PO. Oh, no. A listener with material. <laughs> but I've got better than that. <laughs> really? Better than that? Yeah, wow. I'm, a bit worried, I'm worried about Rishi Sunak because um, even like Labour supporters maybe thought he was a bit of a decent guy, but he's turned into Frank from Blue Velvet. <laughs> yeah. A little bit, yes, but and it doesn't suit him very well. It doesn't. I think he's a, a sick and twisted man. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, I don't think... Because uh, uh, he, he's pretending to be a tough guy now. It's like, whatever Liz said, then I think that uh, ten times over is his position. You know, if Liz said, uh, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm all about bringing back hanging, then he'd say, well, um, OK, uh, I'm, I'm all for torturing and then tying to two horses and having them gallop in opposite directions. Well, rip your arms and your legs off if I come into power, says Rishi Sunak. And that's an actual fact. That is his belief. <laughs> in my imagination. Um, all right, thanks a lot, John. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. It's uh, 12.30 already. Why? Don't time fly when you're out of your mind. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. I enjoy working with people. Yeah, well, enjoy is a very, very strong word. Philip texts, the reason cinemas are going bust is because loony left Hollywood producers are nowadays only making films that lecture their audiences and are more interested in doing that than making quality entertainment. Go woke and go broke, says Philip, who gets his opinions from the Daily Mail. You're an idiot, Philip, and I mean that in a helpful way. Go woke, go broke. Okay, first uh, first of all, anybody that says the word woke in a sentence... Warning, warning. Just disregard anything that they say after that. Don't make any sudden moves. Just smile and back slowly out of the room. Go woke, go broke. Oh, for crying out loud. Another one of these... <laughs> Fury mongers. Well, I don't like this and I don't like that. And moan, 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 moan. 
Here's some of the cinema uh, releases playing um, around uh, these parts. DC League of Super Pets. I mean, presumably that's for very young children. Minions, The Rise of Guru. Also very young children. Neither of which are woke in any way, shape or form that a young child would recognise. Then Dragon Ball Superhero. I've got no idea what that is. I assume it's for very young children. Then Bullet Train. It's got the word bullet in it, as most Hollywood films do. If they ain't got the word bullet or gun in the title of the film, then it would definitely, definitely have it in the poster. Thor, Love and Thunder. Top Gun Maverick. Orphan First Kill. Elvis, Where the Crawdads Sing. I've got no idea what that is. Jurassic World Domination. T does any of that sound woke to you? No. What are you on about, mate? Go woke, go broke. People read that and, they, and it's one of those easy to remember slogans. I mean, it, it rhymes, apart from anything else. And they, they, uh, they repeat it. And they think, oh, I've really won that argument. <laughs> I mean, really, it's just exhausting. You're exhausting me, Philip. Alton, Chris. Hi. Um, I just wanted to defend Mick Lynch um, oh, and right. his use of the term working class. OK. Um, but I think he's talking about economic class. And there are only two. There's people who work for a living who are the working class. So that includes people like university professors and train drivers on 60,000 and, and uh, anybody who gets their income from working and whose income will stop if they stop working. Yeah. Um, and then there's the capitalist class who get their income from owning things. Right. And the Tories are very clever and the newspapers are very clever because they distract people into thinking about social class, which is your you know, your A, B, C, D, E categories yeah. and and um they they cleverly persuade people that they should aspire to move up the social classes and uh, uh some working class people who move in the economic working class who move into social class B think, Oh my God, now I'm in social class B. I can vote for somebody who's going to do things which are not in my interest at all, but in the interest of people who own things. Chris, I don't think anybody actually goes through life thinking, Oh, you gosh, I, I wish I could move from C2 to C1. I don't think anybody no, thinks but that. They think, but they think that Stuart Lee did a very good, a very good, um, sketch where he said, uh, now that I've got a bit more money, I think I should vote Tory. And, no, it's, and, the, it's the other uh, way around. It, if you look at the demographics of who voted Conservative last time around, the less money you have, the lower down yeah. the social pecking order you go, the more likely you are to vote Conservative. The opposite yeah. is true with the Labour Party. The richer you are, the more likely you are to vote Labour. It's as though this entire country has been turned inside out. Yeah, well, I think I think the Daily Mail has done a brilliant job yeah. of persuading working class people that it, uh, they, well, people in social groups CDE um, that it's in their interest to vote Conservative because they'll get Brexit done, <laughs> and they they won't. Uh, and, and now that they've got Brexit done, yeah, um, they're still complaining. They're, uh, suddenly, yeah, well, now they've got Brexit done, they're discovering that that uh, there's massive inflation and all the food prices are going up and their fuels going up. Yeah. And, um, Despite the fact that Jacob Rees Jacob Rees Mogg said. With his own mouth, he didn't even have his people say it for him. He used his own mouth to say that food, clothes and footwear were going to be cheaper after we voted for Brexit. I don't know anything. He still doesn't know anything. <laughs> True. <laughs> he doesn't. And Oh, Where the Crawdads Sing is a good film, by the way. Is it? What's it about? Don't yeah. tell us. It's, it's uh, <laughs> set in the 
Swamp Lands of Virginia. All oh, right. And it's about a girl who. Well, um, don't tell us. Uh, 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 no, what okay, kind I of won't. a film but, is it? But, is it a, an action adventure? Is it a scary a film? Murder, <gasps> it's, a, it's a murder mystery. Right. Um, and it's beautifully shot. Lots is it? Lots of fabulous scenery. Right. Um, and, and uh, you know, great shots of wildlife. Right. Who, and stuff. So, so who did it? No, don't tell us. No, I won't. Right. No spoilers, not on this show. Warning, warning. No, All right, no. thanks a lot, mate. Well, uh, you uh, restrained yourself very well there. So who did it? Don't tell us. Thanks, Chris. Kay emails, we're in a game of Monopoly, but most of us are still being deprived of the passing go money when we were all going to stand up together and demand our universal basic income. Not When are we? When are we? Oh, never mind. I screwed it up, uh, Kay. Never mind. Apologies about that. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Very sorry I screwed up. So sorry you don't know how sorry I am. I'm sorry. Hannah says the Tory party, known as the Nasty Party, and it never has been nastier and more incompetent than the class of 2019, now has the last two contenders battling it out to see who is the nastiest and who can get away with blaming anything or anybody else outside the Tory party for the failures of the Tory party, something they learnt from their disgraced leader's playbook and we still have two more years of this shower. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Says Hannah. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Um, Cornwall, Adrian. Hi, Nick. Adrian. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Good. Uh, listen, I think you should lay off the bodger, because he did say we're going to have a up and ready... Uh, Brexit. Yeah, it just didn't say we could afford the electricity or the gas supply. Well, it? that is true. Yeah, <laughs> that's about all I've got to say. I can't believe I actually got through to you. I love your show, dude. You make me laugh. You just especially when you get dumbfounded by the stupid people who phone you up. So uh, no, Which is most of the time. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Adrian. <laughs> uh, dumbfounded. That's me. Uh, at least, at least one of those syllables. Dumbfounded. One of the three, at least. PJ says, I just woke up. Is that okay? <laughs> well, I don't know. When did you get asleep? Daryl says, go woke, go broke is actually an excellent slogan being completely correct in every respect because as everybody knows, if a saying it, if a saying it doth rhyme, it be true most every time. <laughs> okay. There's me dumbfounded again. Let's have a call in Embra. Wait a minute, that didn't work. There it is. Derek. Hello, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, um, it's all very jolly this evening, isn't it? Uh, is it? Uh, well, it sounds very jolly. I just wanted to say that uh, I'm 62 years old. 62 years old? And I've worked my entire life, and due to mental health issues in the past 18 months, I've had to go on to universal credit. Right. And my income per week is £75. £75? Well, that's, that's what universal credit is for a single gentleman on universal credit. Right. Last night, I had spaghetti uh, with a tin of mushy peas which I used as a sauce. Ew. <laughs> and, and do you know what... Actually, you know what now, well, now hang on a minute. Now, is it the mushy peas? Because there's mushy peas and mushy peas, aren't there? There's some kind of mushy peas that are, that are, are like quite sweet and um, yummy. Uh, they, were, they were kind of savoury. Savoury. Now, do you mean that <laughs> yeah. they're, uh, they're that kind of mushy pea that's a bit sort of bitter tasting? Yes, yes. Oh, I don't like but that. You know, but, but do you know what the worst thing was? Is... I I thought myself fortunate that I had that. Well, yeah. And while it's a I combination, boiling, I've, it's what? a combination I haven't actually um, considered uh, before, and, I, and I'm thinking about it as we're uh, having a chat. And mushy peas on pasta, actually, that could it's, work. I'm, I'm actually a chef, so I could say uh, <laughs> uh, pasta avec uh, le petit pois. Right. So. But I actually consider myself fortunate that I had something to eat. Yes. Because 
Because when it comes to Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak, and I'm an SNP supporter, and if I wasn't, I'd probably vote for Labour. But you know what I want in society today? I just want an honest politician who is going to help. Right, well, because Rishi, best of luck with that. Rishi, Rishi and Liz probably spend more on a bottle of wine on their lunch than I get in a week. In a week. And it's, abs- it's actually diabolical. And they say um, I, that, they, that either of the, both of them are out of touch. I don't know what pe- gives people that complete, idea. They're completely out of touch. Uh, I live, I passed through London a few times, but when it comes to the north of England, Wales, Ireland, Scotland, mm-hmm. uh, Edinburgh, but I live in the Highlands of Scotland, and the Conservatives, even Labour, have no sense of. What we're going through up here is like, I've got £70 a week. Yep. That's basically what I... Well, what, what you're have. going through in Edinburgh is also being uh, gone through in London, because let's not forget that London has some of the poorest areas in the entire country. I mean, people talk about London like it's uh, like we're all investment bankers down here. We ain't. Uh, there's an enormous amount of uh, people who are on the breadline in London and Liverpool and Edinburgh and Rill and uh, Swindon and all points north, south, east and west. There's, um, it's going to be the majority of the people in this country who are going to be suffering uh, under uh, the, um, you know, the, the privations that are being visited upon us deliberately. Other countries' uh, populations are not suffering like this already. So just wait. But um, I wish you all the best uh, there, <coughs> there uh, Derek. P- mushy peas on pasta. I think that's, there's something about that that could work. I think I'm going to give it a go. Now, do you cook the pasta or do you eat that raw? 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. I love the taste of crunchy pasta in the morning. This is Nick Abbott on LBC. Coming up at one on LBC, Clive Bull. Two weeks left in the contest to find Britain's next Prime Minister. Most of the population has no say on this, but who would you choose as the next occupant of number 10? Clive Bull on LBC. A lot of life can happen in two years, so it's good to know that with a Barclay Car Platinum credit card, you could get 0% interest on purchases for up to two years. Handy when you want to spread the cost. It's a boy. Check your eligibility now at barclaycard.co.uk. Oh, and a girl. Representative example. 22.9% APR representative variable. 22.9% purchase rate per annum variable based on £1,200 credit limit. Subject to application, financial circumstances and borrowing history. New customers only. T's and C's and exclusions apply. A rising costs forcing you into unaffordable debt. An individual voluntary arrangement from Credit Fix could help. Write off up to 81% of your unsecured debt with manageable repayments and or interest and charges frozen. With over 14,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot, Credit Fix could help you to a brighter financial future. Just text DEBT to 6677. Text DEBT to 6677 now. Terms apply may not be suitable for all. Can affect credit rating. Free advice at moneyhelper.org.uk. Headphones left on the bus. Laptop keeps lagging. Smartphone not so smart. Let's get the kids sorted. For the flexible way to shop everything for their new school year, say hello to VeryPay. Choose pay now or over three months and pay no interest. Or pay later. VeryPay. Nice and flexible. For when life is anything but. Search VeryPay. Very pay credit provided subject to status by Shop Direct Finance Company Limited. 18 plus representative 39.9% APR variable. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. He is a very sick and dangerous man. A very sick and dangerous man. Joanne texts, why do you think the Tory party members are about to vote the Brains Trust in? when the British public are telling them that Fishy Sunak has a better chance of beating Kiarora. <laughs> it's a bit weird, isn't it, that they are deliberately going to vote for somebody that the general population likes less. 
I think it's because uh, they just take it in stages. They they both are promising everything under the sun to their immediate audience, which is zero point two percent of the population. After they have, uh, after one of them has secured victory, they will then pivot 180 degrees on every single thing that they promised those people, and start lying about what they're going to be um, delivering to us lot if only we vote them in. And they will take a focus group, and um, it will, that focus group will tell them what we want to hear, and it will probably be along the lines of. Uh, the French are being mean to us. Uh, that's the reason why Brexit hasn't worked out. Um, and um, we'll be even crueler to foreigners. Vote for me. And I bet we do. I'll bet five pounds that we do. I bet five pounds are like an accumulator. Not that I know anything about betting. I'll bet five pounds that Trump will be the next president of the United States of America. And that um, Liz Trust will be, uh, well, I'm not actually sure that it's going to be her. But I bet the Tories win the next general election. <laughs> this planet's doomed. <laughs> this planet is doomed. There's a going out of business sign on this entire planet. Due to poor management. Uh, Daniel says, uh, Michael Gove deciding to quit politics is a... A major capital letters, big news story, says Daniel. If he decides to quit politics, then uh, it would be a big story. But I bet he doesn't. Add that to my accumulator. Boy, by this time next year, I'm going to be a millionaire. I still won't be able to afford butter. Nottingham. Hello, Lee. Oh, hello. Lee. Who's this? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. I'll put you on hold, Lee. As soon as I find out, I'll let you know. Pradeep texts. What about replacing Boris with that octopus that used to predict the football results with great accuracy? Better or worse? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> well, we should give it a go. Why not? Martin says, here's how to solve the problem of energy price rises. Instead of giving the energy companies extra money, we should all stand outside at 8 p.m. every Thursday and <laughs> give them a round of applause. Works every time. Yeah, well, you know, our appreciation. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Spend that. Pauline says, is it likely that Putin is going for a nuke accident? Um, well... Blimey, talk about bringing me down right at the end of the show. Thanks a lot, Pauline. Lorraine said, smog was right. Food's cheaper at the food bank. Well, that is true. I think he said it was heartening, wasn't it? Heartening that uh, we've got so many food banks, says uh, Mr. Um, multi-millionaire Jacob Rees Mogg. Heartening that people are so hungry that food has to be provided for them. It's perfectly normal in a well-run country. Let's have um, Bristol. Hello, John. Hi, uh, Nick. John. Yes, I just uh, yeah. Um, I'm still waiting for my sunny uplands and my unicorn. Did you get yours yet? Or um, no, I think it got lost in the post. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm thinking that. Yeah. No, honestly, um, what a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't repeat people's material back at them. People generally hate that. I don't mind it at all, John. But people might object. Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. Exactly. David says, I haven't got a hosepipe ban. I live in Lincolnshire and can still legally use my hosepipe. So I would be willing to lend it to any of your listeners down south as a friendly gesture. Appreciate it, David. Thank you. He's just trying to be nice. Linda says, does not matter about the past. All Tories, all Labour, all Lib Dem care about is money. Simples. We go round and round and round and another week goes by. Says Linda, who's busy... Chasing her tail. You'll never catch it, Linda. 
See, now that's the kind of talk that keeps people in on polling day. Oh, they're all the same. No, they're not all the same. You will have a stark choice. Very simple. Pick the least bad option. Just do it. All Tories or Labour or Lib Dem care about is money. Not correct. They all care about different things. They all care about money. Who doesn't? But on top of that, they care about different things. Now, they might, there might not be wide gulfs between them. They might be a different by small increments. But pick one, because you're going to be stuck with one for five years after the next election. Five or more. So to say that, oh, well, they're all the same, so forget it, is just is so self-defeating. Stop thinking like that. It just drives me nuts when people say that. Pack it in, Linda. I mean it. Pick the least bad option. Tony emails, can Graham explain how to put the coins in the smart meters when they're automatically converted? <laughs> Back to a conversation I was having, gosh, seems like weeks ago on this show, but just a matter of hours. I think what he was referring to is um, your... I mean, my assumption was that you'll have an account with the company and you have to fill, you know, transfer money from your bank account to their bank account. Not that you'll actually have to take real cash and try to jam it in the machine. Or just leave it on top. It'll probably work. Um, York, Wayne... <laughs> hey, how are you doing, mate? All right, thanks. Nice to speak to you. Nice to speak to you again on C. I love this show. I listen to, I listen to James O'Brien on, on the morning. Right. Why, why and, are you laughing uh, like that, I'm, Wayne? Because I'm all serious with James O'Brien and then just for light relief and yeah. absolute, but still a little, having some news. A little light relief. I, 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 no, no, no. No, because you're going to get back to me with the um, researchers, so leave that alone. Um, no, what I was going to say was was about the, the guy you phoned up, um, not the guy you didn't even know you was talking to, um, the guy who phoned up and said about Category C, Category D, C1, C2, and all the rest of it. And I was thinking, well, where, where am I? <laughs> I don't know where I plant myself in these. You're in, you're in York, Wayne. Glad to be of assistance. Thanks for whatever that was. Murray emails. Hello there. From here. Have you seen the new Beavis and Butthead film yet? I'm saving up to see it. My one cup tea bags are now two cup. Well, that just makes sense, especially if you have uh, tea as weak as me. Don't use it just once and chuck it away. That's not saving the planet. In fact, bags aren't saving the planet. Why do we go to all the trouble of putting tea in bags? Just put it in a pot, pour in water, and then strain it. You know, like good British people do. We don't need no stinking bags. <laughs> um, no, I have not seen the new Beavis and Butthead film yet. Somebody mentioned that there was one, and I didn't believe them, but I've, uh, I've discovered since that there is actually a new Beavis and Butthead film. It seems a bit odd. I mean, it's how long ago is Beavis and Butthead uh, now? It's, it's like, they're like, God, could they be 20 years old? Probably something around there. Or more. Oh, my God. Time is going way too quickly, and then it's over. Before you know it. But no, I have not seen it yet. Hamid emails, Can you believe all these puritanical idiots complaining about the Prime Minister of Finland dancing at a party? It's as though they expect leaders should always be grey, boring and serious. At least she was partying legally, unlike a certain buffoon who did it when it was illegal. Any comments, Bodge? I, I can't comment on that. Can't comment on that. Well, I mean, that seems like an excellent um, way to host a business meeting. The Prime Minister of Finland... <laughs> You're having a party. <laughs> that was a perfect um, uh, impersonation of the Prime Minister of Finland. Well, you don't know otherwise. 
I'll be back tonight at 10 o'clock, uh, or I'll try to get through the, let's see, 10 pages of texts and emails. God, as, as fast as I've read them, they've been uh, added to. How do these people get my number? So I'll do that at 10 o'clock when I come back tonight. Uh, because otherwise people might think I'm bad at my job. <laughs> uh, if uh, now the rest of my, I, I don't know what's coming up without going to the bottom of the page. That's 10 pages down. Um, ah, Richard Spur is here at four o'clock. But first, in person, on this radio station, it's Clyde Ball. 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 Radio station, it's Clyde Ball.